Hi, I'm Kat, and today I'm showing you how to make this cute little miniature aquarium out of polymer clay and resin. This is part two to the part one that I recorded last week. I started with gravel and used different shades of brown scrap clay. I textured with aluminum foil lightly on both sides and then separated it out with my ball tool. After that's done, go ahead and bake them in the oven and separate those out lightly with your fingertips or you can put them in a plastic bag and kind of ground them with the back of a knife or any of your tools. Check to make sure that it's enough to fill the bottom of your aquarium to the place to a point that you like. And if not, go on ahead and uh, add more. But you want to make sure that you blend all of the different colors of clay together so that you don't have um, some sections of the tank that are darker brown than other sections that are lighter brown. Then to start making the fish, I used um, resin that I mixed up and put on a clear Ziploc plastic bag um, to keep it clear on both sides. The resin needs to pull easily off the bag. And then I formed little sheets of it and allowed them to cure completely. Then to start making my fish, I just put on a small dab of liquid clay. And then um, all of my fish are translucent clay mixed with a little bit of pink to give it a little flesh tone or a fish flesh tone rather. For the larger fish, I cut in gills with the back of my knife. And for the smaller and for the eye sockets, just a little dab with your ball tool. You do not have to worry about this step with the smaller fish, just paint the details on. And then using my ball tool, I stretched out some of the clay at the top to make fins and the tail. This is the largest fish in my aquarium, which I decided to make an angel. And then I used some Pearl X powder at the bottom to give it a little shine and some chalk pastel at the top to make it into a yellow, a yellow angel fish. I'm going to go back over with some shiny paint too. And then I use some liquid clay to accentuate and add just a little more uh, volume to the tail and to the fins. So just put that on the body of the fish and stretch it out over the fins and the tail. I decided to make a zebra angel fish for the next one. And I tried very hard to research my fish and make sure that I was choosing fish that would actually get along in a real tank, a freshwater tank. And angels have those two little tendrils, so I added those on. I didn't worry about any details on the opposite side because these I wanted to all face the front of the aquarium. The back of the aquarium I wasn't sure if I was going to cover or not and I'm still not 100% sure. So. Um, I just decided to do the fronts of the fish, but if you are deciding to do the back, then just turn the plate over and do the details on the other side as well. After baking, I painted, and for the zebra I used um, a coating of white shimmery paint, some silver on top of it to further give some details at the top and then a little bit of black for the stripes and also some watered down black for the gills. Don't forget to use a shimmery uh, white or silver for the eyes and then a black pupil. Fish have naturally reflective eyes and naturally reflective scales so please 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 make sure to get either shimmery paint or to use Pearl X powder mixed in with your paint or on top of your paint afterwards. I did all of the other fish the same way as the angels except for the tetra. Their bodies are clear and they have a glow in the dark blue stripe. So I used just a small little dab of 
um, little snake cut up snake of clay that I painted in an electric blue and then covered mm -hmm. that with um, some of the glow in the dark powder that I used in my last tutorial and then the orange stripe at the bottom then I don't show this step but I'm using clear translucent I mean clear liquid clay on top of them for the bodies and stretching that into the fins for the plants I just went outside and dug all around my home um, to look for any sort of plants that were under live plants larger plants so just the smaller ones usually are the ones sitting underneath um, your larger plants so just look underneath and then moss at the side of the house um, on any sort of rocks on the side of trees that kind of thing that little moss was dried out sitting someplace But my favorite moss was this one, and this was found at the side of my house and also on a tree stump. And then I dipped all of these little plants in resin to see which ones I liked the best. I really did like the moss the best, so that's the one I used the most in the aquarium. And the good thing about that is it actually dyes too, so you can put it in some red or purple dye if you'd like and make it a different color. And then for the bubble wall, I used a little bit of resin that I poured on a plastic bag and then I used some of these teeny tiny little micro beads um, that I purchased on eBay I love eBay and um, these are like 0.25 um, a quarter of a millimeter basically so they're extremely small and then I poured these into my resin and allowed that to set overnight of course and then you can either take the entire strip and stick that to the back of your wall don't glue it please don't glue it just stick it or you can cut it into little strips like I did to make it look like streams of bubbles coming up from your bubble wand then for the rocks I used varying shades of gray white beige black clay and blended them loosely together and then I went on ahead and cut them in the small shapes um, to make my rocks just cut them into usable shapes and sizes and then texture them with aluminum foil it's okay if some of the black or the brown are streaks there it's um it's a more natural appearance either way you can also cut in little gauges with your knife and just kind of texture them in you really can't go wrong with your rock wall so just have fun be creative this was actually my favorite part of the aquarium or my favorite part to make <laughs> Make sure when you're building your rock wall to put plenty of hiding spaces for fish. And you can, if you'd like, go through and tuck some of your fish into the caves and caverns that you make with your rocks. Just also be sure that you're altering, that you're alternating the different shades of rocks that you're created. So some of the beige ones should be in with some of the black ones and some of the brown ones, etc., etc. And then I started to add the plants in, just sticking them in place. Just try some things out. These are the smaller pieces of plants. But just make sure that when you um, that you're, they're not going to protrude over the aquarium when it's all set in place. And afterwards, I used a little bit of chalk pastel and I dusted over it with green um, to get all the crevices and corners so it looks like algae. I put a small placo or algae eater in this tank on the side wall, but obviously he has not gotten to the rocks yet. And then I've started to put everything in, secured loosely with E6000. My rocks, I poured a small layer of resin on top of them to keep those in place and so that none of them would start floating up when I was pouring the rest of the resin. And then the larger fish I cut out, and but the smaller fish I left in schools. And then just begin to pour your resin in. You're going to do this one layer at a time. And this took about six uh, ounces to fill this entire container. However, I am going to suggest that when you're pouring this in, you use all your resin from the same bottle. That way your plates for the fish and the plants will blend in. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.